<sighs> wow. Sometimes I wonder what makes New York City so magical during Christmas. I mean, just look at this tree. Growing up in New York City, one of the memories I cherished the most was coming here to the heart of Midtown to see the tree, admire the decorations, be within the hustle and bustle of the holiday spirits. We are, of course, at Rockefeller Center, and specifically we are what is called the Channel Gardens. They're called gardens because this used to be the oldest botanical gardens within the city, and then it was converted into Rockefeller Center. But this is more iconic because of all the display of the angels and also the tree right in front of us. However, I'm very curious as to why New York City is so magical during Christmas. I mean, it is obvious. There's a lot of decorations, but I think there's more to it. There's this heart that New York City has when it comes to the holidays. So let's meet the people who make this holiday spirit and cheer happen for countless people coming from all around the world. The magic is New York. It's a special time of year here in New York. In New York, I think it's a unique part of your life here. That everybody's so happy. The way that New York brings people here for the holidays, you know, we're all here to celebrate. There's a lot of people for whom coming to the city at least once during the season is a tradition from, you know, the greater New York area, so the relative locals. There are so many iconic things about Christmas in New York. Part of, of New York in a way, you know, I don't think you can really take Christmas away from the New York and, and it's always kind of associated together. So of course, many people around the world celebrate Christmas, but where does it come from? Sounds like an obvious question, but sometimes you'll be shocked that people actually don't fully know. And I think coming right here to beautiful St. Patrick's Cathedral is the perfect way to get in touch with the very origin story of the nativity, which led to Christmas. Eighteen seventy nine, the Irish born Archbishop Hughes of New York's Roman Catholic Church was ridiculed for building this grand Gothic cathedral in what used to be the far flung outskirts of the city. However, he was adamant that this would become the shining symbol of the Catholic world and what he believed would become the heart of the city. He was right. Today, St. Patrick's Cathedral is visited by millions of people in all of its majestic archways, stunning statuary, and of course, the scene of the nativity that is on display every Christmas. But what is the nativity? Well, more than 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem, according to Christian texts, the Virgin Mary gave birth to a baby boy who would go on to change the course of history. Local shepherds who were going about their nightly duties of watching over their flock were approached by an angel who said to them, Today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And three wise men hailing from the farthest corners of the east, guided by the bright star of Bethlehem, came bearing gifts. This is the scene known as the Nativity, in which every December 25th is a celebration in honor of this biblical event. The heart of the Christmas celebrations in New York City is mostly centered in Midtown. Meet council member Keith Powers, he represents District 4, which includes a whopping Times Square, Midtown, Central Park South, Upper East Side, and beyond. He's working on making the holidays in the heart of the city 
more enjoyable for tourists and locals alike. We're welcoming so many different people here during the holiday season. We're adding that on to people that are already coming here every single day to visit, to work here. So it's a really big and important moment for the city. It adds so much revenue to the city as well. But you also have to remember that we have to manage this. We have to make sure we can get these people around safely. Right. We can get people a way to get around in a convenient and comfortable way. So there's a lot of pieces be go behind the scenes mm. to, to make sure that happens. And also, by the way, in, in addition to managing what's here, we're trying to get more people to come. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we want to make... Do you think it can fit even more people coming? It's hard. <laughs> it's not, but we've been challenging. But when you do things like closing the streets down on the weekends, when you create open space here and more plaza space, you actually not just manage people that are here but you invite more people to come here because mm. they are going to hear pleasant about how pleasant it was for people yeah. i think a lot of people want to come and see the tree they want to ice skate they want to see sacks they want to go to st pat's they want to do all the great things around this area but if they hear it's a nightmare they're not going to want to come here precisely so if we make it a pleasant experience the word will get around people have a good time here and they'll hopefully come back or come back next year and it will be a, a victory that builds on itself you want to be around new York City when it's uh, the holiday season because there's so much to do. It's festive. You do your shopping here, and there's just a lot of things that really uh, come to life at this particular moment. Also, making sure people can get around in a way that does not feel like they're a sardine and yeah. they're a suck in the can. They have to be able to get around here, walk around, enjoy this area, mm -hmm. not feel like it's a headache. We're also we're in Midtown, so we're trying to get make sure people can come to work. We want people to be back and around, walking and shopping the businesses too. So we want to have like an inviting. Area area for people to do that and what we've seen is when we actually close down some of these streets when we uh, during the weekends invite people to come here people really want to do it but when I came into the council it was one of the things in my first holiday season as a council member back in 2018 I started saying to the then mayor you know we have so many crowds here we, Times Square Rockefeller Center those areas when they're really crowded don't invite people people don't want to be there they're annoyed with the experience when you actually open them up to people people, you will see the response. So we started slowly over the years making some progress here on Fifth Avenue to get this activated in the holidays. And I'm, last year started this new program on Sundays to close it down. And you will see people walking, enjoying the streets, stopping to see Saks Fifth Avenue, stopping to take it in. And it's like one of those rare moments we get where we actually get to stop and pause and celebrate New York City right. versus running right through it. One of the big things that's going to happen in Fifth Avenue over the next decade or so, but hopefully sooner, is we're really leaning into a big plan for Fifth Avenue to make this the sidewalks bigger, to make it more pedestrian friendly, to hopefully expedite transportation up and down this avenue. That would make it holidays plus uh, a great place to be. And so we're trying to do a big vision for Fifth Avenue that goes beyond the holidays. But the holidays actually really help make the case. And there's other areas of the city like Diker Heights, which you listen in a really yeah. extravagant way. And so that becomes like their sort of local tourism there so sometimes like local pride is a part of it and neighborhood sort of looking out nobody's looking out for each other that becomes a big part of it I do think maybe as a city we should encourage more of that I think it's just nice to have a community that feels sort of Sorry. uplifted during this time of the year. You really should uh, celebrate the city, celebrate this area, celebrate the holiday season and bring a little spirit to the city that sometimes we're running around without any. So it's nice to have that for a moment. Well, what's the magic? The magic is New York. It's, I mean, this area just shows it off to you. You yeah. get the people, so many people don't get to experience this every day. They don't get to walk around streets that are bustling and crowded with shopping, with restaurants, with attractions. The week, you can walk down Fifth Avenue or any part of Midtown, you can see the Rockefeller a tree. You can go into a great restaurant. You can see Saks. You can see the crowds of New York City, which a lot of people don't get to see. I think New York City is the magic, and I think we're really leaning into it and really offering more opportunities to people to be able to enjoy New York City in a, spe in a very special moment and way. And I think um, there's just so much to do in New York City, and we just add even more mm. during this time of year. And it's all within, for many people, walking distance of each other. So where are we approaching right now? We're my favorite place in New York City, Grand Central. <laughs> 
which is, uh, you know, always always a little bit nicer during the holidays with the trees lit up and everything here, but also bustling and obviously so important to the city based on how we get around and how people commute to Midtown. It's just nice to be with your family. We would do it in the city uh, and then just go see family. And um, I feel like as I've gotten older, I've, I've enjoyed it even more. And that's the whole spirit of this season is uh, whether you're religious or not, being able to celebrate it with people, with together. So my family would do the mass. We would go then, we do the big Italian, I'm Irish, but we do the big Italian dinner with family, friends, all the fishes. I mean, that's a pretty good night. The logistics of facilitating countless people coming in and out of the city during the holidays is a feat to behold. I'm grateful for New Yorkers like Keith, who work tirelessly to keep the city running in tip-top shape. But a big part of the holidays is the act of gift giving. I'm curious, who are the independent shop owners that provide one-of-a-kind goods which bring joy to many on Christmas morning? Right now, we are in Union Square, one of my favorite holiday markets. I really like how they emulate kind of that old German style. Some of these places are actual woodworkings, like down here. Um, but it's right in the heart of what most New Yorkers experience. Because Times Square, a lot of tourists and visitors or people working in the offices usually pass through. But it's Union Square where most local New Yorkers actually pass through. It's one of the big train hubs and it's one of the most visited areas in the entire city. But this holiday market always has so much cheer. You feel like you're consumed by the energy of New York and yet it feels like a peaceful holiday time at the same time. All right, let's visit some of these shops and see who the people are behind the scenes. The puppet shop has been uh, running for 21 years. The first holiday market they did was Bryan Park in 02. The holiday markets has been great for silly puppets. We do all three here in New York. This is the purple monster. You know, the kids love the interaction of this. Yeah. I mean, we have over 50 different varieties of puppet. You know, New York is so special for the holidays. Uh, I'm from Brooklyn. I grew up here, I'm a native New Yorker. Rob, the founder of this, he's a tri-stater, he lives here, grew up in New Jersey. That's where he made his first puppets for a small little uh, flea market type of thing. And he did amazingly well with them and he started this business and it's organically grown over the last 20 plus years. And what do you think makes Christmas in New York so magical? Because it's it's a premier place to visit for the holidays. Well, I think the yeah. fact that you have such a, a variety of people here, you have people from all over the world come to see the lights of New York, mm. come to celebrate, whether it's going to Rockefeller Center to see the tree or look at the shops, the lights in Saks Fifth Avenue or the windows there doing all these holiday markets. It's, it's a special time of year here in New York. So we started making terrariums uh, in 2019, and but basically it's a family uh, business. They started with my parents a long time ago in the 80s, and has been great here in New York. People really love plants, but especially terrariums. Really quick about my family, they started making terrariums in the 80s, yeah. and it started like a hobby, but it becomes a business. In, I was at the beginning of 90s, I was born back then, so I grew up surrounded by plants and terrariums, and fall in love with this and I'm bringing the family legacy to New York. Yes. Yeah, I would say New York is a magic city, but during Christmas it's even more. So I think terrariums and everything becomes in that very fantastic moment of the year. See the lights, see the people shopping, see the people traveling and enjoying the time. Mm. In New York, I think it's a unique part of your life here.
what was your first time coming to the market over here? Because you cover as a content creator a lot of shopping and things to do in New York. But this one is just so special because not only it's like, you know, in a very central location, people can come through, but there's mm -hmm. just so many shops. I love that there's like, I think over 175, I think, vendors here and it's such a variety. And like, these are all local businesses that are like incredible and unique. The business ran for almost 17 years, and originally we are New York brand. Everything invented in New York, but our factory is in Valley Loire in France. And over here in the shopping markets, we are almost 10. Same locations, same um, spots that everybody know to come back to the same place too. So for the hot chocolate, you have that in process, so that's amazing and you can see it. We started with just milk. Mm. So um, the way we make it, you put six spoons per cup. Okay. So you do it in a French way and you mm. make it with only milk. We don't recommend to make it with water. Oh, good. Mm. So when you mix it, I know that's yeah. how it's delicious. You mix the powder with the milk. Mm. You serve it on 140 degrees. That is the perfect temperature. Not too hot, not too cold. And then in the bottom, we put a truffle inside. And what's the thing that you enjoy most about New York City Christmas? Oh, I like I like the vibe over here. The vibe. I like I like that everybody's so happy. So cheers. Uh, cheers. Mm. That's fantastic. It might look good in the bottle. It's a, yeah, it's very thick, it's right? Really nice. I like how chocolatey it is, but it's not like too much, you know, at once. So it's something very drinkable, very festive for the holidays. So yeah, this is definitely a must. Mm -hmm. And then uh, hot chocolate, like. Is it crucial to the holiday spirit? Absolutely. Oh my gosh. It's the must-have drink of the season and it's something that not only keeps you warm but I think brings out the best in people because it's sweet, it's something nice. I came here as I don't know, like six, seven years ago as a tourist for okay. the first time. And I saw New York City and everything and all the lights and you know, the trees everywhere. And I really think that all the tourists feel it the same. It's such a cold city, mm. but it's a warm, energy when you see all that happiness around you and people are coming from all over the world and New York is the only place that you have people that actually coming from all over the world to celebrate the same holiday together mm. and you have different nationalities you have different cultures and everybody over here and they're all happy enjoying the holiday you know they see all this happiness and we are all giving them good vibes too. We, New York is a great city to, to come from a different place in the world and celebrate over here because you're never alone here. There is always people around you. And the Christmas uh, market mm. gives you good energy because everybody celebrates around you. And when it's like Hanukkah time, that it's um, two days from now, mm -hmm. you're gonna see we're gonna have a menorah over here okay. and all the Jewish stores around us gonna put a menorah. And when it's Christmas time, we put songs. So everybody like so happy and you don't feel a difference like when you're far from home. So um, I like it here. Yeah, it says, our heart kidnap in Gaza. Bring them home now. Because um, yeah, our families and our friends are still there. And it's our heart, because we are all one, um, one big heart. All of us, so yeah. Honestly, probably just all the decorations and lights. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have like all the tall skyscrapers and they're always doing something special for the holidays too. Um, all the different pop-ups that they have, the ice skating rinks that they open here, they kind of just transform the whole city into like a little winter wonderland, which I think is awesome. This is really good. <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. So our most popular ornament is here. It's our um, you know, New York City oh. iconic taxi with a Christmas tree on top. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look at that. We also have, you know, the now our almost, almost vintage uh, metro car. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is soon going to be right, extinct. Right. Yeah. So what makes you want to come to the market uh, outside from your store in Brooklyn? Uh, we get so much feedback from people yeah. and there's one, there's so much joy. Yeah. And it's such a, like a bustling, happy, festive place. Friends. Hi, friends. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this Hi. is my area. This is her shop. Florence, nice to meet you. Did you know about the holidays in New York before coming to so New York I only City? watched the movies, you okay. know, I never really experienced it. My father was here and like he was like, 
like you know home alone. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, my father was one who was here, and the very first, the first day that I arrived here in New York was in. Um, they had this big, big snowstorm, like a blizzard, and it was my first time seeing the snow, and it was just so magical, and just felt like I was in the movie, and I was like, yep, New York is, I'm here for New York, I'm ready. <laughs> Yes, there we go. Is that a good length for you? So I was like, here, I got an Oh, I love it. Yeah, this is amazing. Oh, this is cool. It matches your outfit. Yeah. It does, yeah. Bro, <laughs> New York. <laughs> Can I show my dude? Yes. There we go. <laughs> New York, best city in the world. And what do you think makes New York City so magical during Christmas? You know, that's such a great question. I mean, I think it's so magical because of the people, really, and it's yeah. the way that New York brings people here for the holidays. You know, we're all here to celebrate, and then New York as a city has so many beautiful lights and also opportunities like the holiday market to bring people together. So it really is about that sense of togetherness and community that I think um, New York allows because of the many different uh, markets or the uh, tree lightings or the, th the things to see and do uh, really lends itself to do that. You know, I really think that New York is uh, more than just a city, you know, it's a symbol of uh, cultural diversity, it's a symbol of uh, the joy and light of people here um, and around the world, so I think it really captures that spirit. We're gonna, I'm gonna introduce you to my friends, the Boys Co. over here. Um, so they're a Filipino small business brand. Um, so they really focus on mochi. Have you had mochi before? Mochi, yes, I've had okay, mochi Okay, okay. So these are mochi cookies that they're the signature oh, okay. things. Yeah, different flavors. Um, but this year they also have the butter mochi squares, which are like really good as well as there's a ginger hot tea that I also love. It's a ginger ale, I think it's called. What was the first holiday you experienced here in New York? Yeah, so when I first came to New York, it really was for me coming to these markets and being able to see the Christmas trees in the city. Uh, did you have already a preconception in your mind from all the movies that you saw? Just a bit, you know. Yeah. I definitely had the the snowy scene with you know Park Plaza and like the hotel scenes and um, yeah, I think just just a few. I mean, I think the Rockefeller Center was mm. the one, very much one that was in my mind um, before coming. Um, but to experience it in person live is just so so magical. It really is. Christmas shopping isn't the only fun activity to do in New York City. There's also the horse carriage tours in Central Park. This has been the staple of the city for more than 150 years. We met with Christina Hansen, who has been the horse carriage tour guide for more than 17 years and is one of the top spokeswomen for continuing this age-old tradition. She knows everything and anything about the history of horses in the city. But the insights she had about Christmas in New York is what really surprised me. We've been giving carriage rides for hire in Central Park to the public since the day the park opened in December of 1858. That's amazing to have such a long legacy. 165 years wow. now. I mean, the other great New York City institution that's 1858, yeah. it's November of 1858, so they've got us beat by a month, uh, is Macy's. Macy's opened in November of 1858, so. Well, Christmas time, I mean, this is, this is such a, you know, Christmas classic in New York. Yeah. Um, you got, it, it's not just that we have people from all over the world, because we do, mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of people for whom coming to the city at least once during the season is a tradition from, you know, the greater New York area, so the relative locals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the things that you do when you come into the city for Christmas is you go to the Rockettes, you go ice skating someplace, you see the windows, you see the Saks Fifth Avenue light show, and taking a carriage ride has been one of those other like Christmas traditions that's like, that's like the Christmas thing, you know? <laughs> so right. we, get, we get people that they come every year or every other year. And it's also just kind of like, it's a part of, you know, the thing to do. <laughs> so you also have regulars. Yeah, we have, so we have people that, you know, at Christmas time, we have 
people that come, you know, this is part of their Christmas tradition with their family. I see. Or it was like when I was a kid, my grandmother took me on a carriage right at Christmas time. Mm. And now we're here and we're taking the kids with the grandkids to see the Rockettes and we're gonna take a carriage ride too. I mean, the Rockettes have been doing the Christmas Spectacular for 90 years. <laughs> you know, we've been out here the entire time. We've been giving carriage rides here since 1858. So, you know, sort of like old New York traditions that so get passed down from generation to generation. And in a way, New York City invented American Christmas. I mean, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. I mean, Washington Irving, of course, captured the ideas of, like, the Dutch traditions yeah. for Christmas, which included Sinterklaas, you know, which the Feast of St. Nicholas is tomorrow. Clement Clark Moore in the 1820s wrote A Visit to St. Nicholas, which we all know is the night before Christmas, which we all have memorized and created, you know, the American co conscious of what modern Santa Claus is like in the United States. So, I mean, it's just been such a part of the culture here of like Christmas in New York, and it really is a thing. I mean, you know, when you're in the media capital of the world and New York's version of Christmas is what gets broadcast across the country and around the world, people want to come here and experience it firsthand. My favorite block in all of New York City for, I'd say no good reason, except it's a good reason, is, um, is a block of 55th Street between 8th and 9th. We go down and on the way home back to the stable. Okay. They got a block association there. And they put up Christmas lights in the trees. And it's nothing fancy. <laughs> I mean, it's literally just some guys looped, you know, strings of Christmas lights across it. But it's just like such a nice, you know, like this bright time in the middle of the dark of winter. Mm -hmm. You know, as somebody who works outside, you know, I spend more time outdoors than in. Yeah. And so, like, the fact that it gets dark at 4.30, you know, like, is a thing. But to have the lights and all this sort of stuff through the dark of winter, you know, it's just really, I, I, I love that. You know, like, I decorate the carriage. I don't have a Christmas tree, but I decorate the carriage. There's lights on the carriage, you know. <laughs> I appreciate you giving me a tour. All right. It was amazing. I loved it. My first experience on a horse and carriage tour, and this was yep. a wonderful way to see Central Park. I would hear this analogy of Christmas celebrations being a way to bring light to the darkness of winter over and over again throughout this journey. It makes sense, with the bright lights and decorations shining in the long hours of the night, big department stores glowing with their elaborate window displays, and theater productions dazzling crowds with vibrant song and dance, New York City is lit up despite the early nightfall and warm despite the freezing temperatures. Further uptown at Lincoln Center is yet another place that people flock to during the holidays. About seven years ago, I came to see the Magic Flute for the very first time uh, spontaneously with a friend of mine who had like last minute tickets. And it was my first time ever at the Met Opera. And I was blown away because the Magic Flute is a classic by Mozart, but they make it feel like it's a part of the holidays. And it's one of my favorite shows. Since then, I've gone once more and I kind of want to go again. Uh, but the talent behind making this production is so high that I'm just amazed. And today we're going to interview right now a few of the choir singers. I'm gonna, let's see how it is working at the Met during this holiday season. Hi, I'm 
Hey, I'm Ariel. All right. Yeah, nice to meet you. Jason. Andrews. Jason. Hi, Hi Craig. 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 Rochelle. Rochelle, Hi, Rochelle. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah. I appreciate that. Well, I'm I'm the shortest uh, tenure. I've been here for yeah. four years full time. I did three years as an extra chorister, and this is I think my 19th or 20th season full time. I guess that makes me the old guy. I think so. yeah. <laughs> I've been here since 1995. Oh, interesting. Part time in '95 for seven, six years, and then uh, this is my 22nd season full time. Yeah. The story went that uh, Peter Gelb, I think his mother actually said, this production by Julia Taymor is so charming, you should shorten it and make it a holiday show for kids. <laughs> and so that's what they did. They um, contact, I think, Gene Shear is the librettist for the English version. Yeah. So they got him to rewrite the lyrics in English, mm -hmm. and they truncated some of the numbers to make it shorter. So it was just a, you know, an uninterrupted 90 to 120 minute show. And uh, it's, it gets great reception every year. And as gig workers, um, before we were here, we were all were soloists and, and church workers, and um, so working during the holidays is not anything really new for um, us, us musicians, because there's always going to be an Advent service or a holiday concert. Um, so working during the holidays has not doesn't really like. It's, I don't have a sadness for it. I actually have a fondness <laughs> um, seeing people be, being part of their season, um, leaving the theater and seeing the beautiful holiday lights. Um, I feel like it kind of like fills my soul a little bit in that way that it, we're bringing joy to people and uh, being part of of their holidays as well. I think it's the culture. I think it's the beauty of the lights, the windows. Um, I was at Macy's the other day and I took a video. It is stunning. Just like sitting there on the street, you have some guy playing some modern song and then like Etta James singing a Christmas standard like on, in another car. So it's just, it's that wonderful mix of like nostalgia and uh, making new memories. There's so many great uh, cultural elements between the museums, shows, um, our opera, um, the lights. I just think there's the ice skating. I mean, there's just so many great things and you can't do it all in one trip. So why not come back every year, right? I think you're exactly right. There are so many iconic things about Christmas in New York, whether it's the Rockefeller Center tree, the botanical gardens with the trains, you know, again, the lights all over town, the, the lights at Macy's. I mean, again, you can't do it all in one trip if you're only here for a week. So I think people have to come back. Yeah, the same thing. It's just, and, and we also have the, the pop-up holiday markets I love, like down here at Columbus Circle and Bryant Park that pop up every holiday time every year and uh, which makes it a little convenient for us also because during December seems to get so crazy I don't have time to, to holiday shop so it's convenient to run right <laughs> down here to Columbus Circle when I have a break between rehearsals and shows and do a little shopping down there and run back do a show. Our neighbor right here so we have yeah. the Nutcracker going on as well yeah. um, just a few blocks south we have the Rockettes um, all these these institutions that do beautiful productions every single year. So I feel like you could go to one place, see so many great things, so many things that are both traditional or new, um, and then have a nice cup of hot chocolate. Jason, Rochelle, and Craig are just three out of the many people on stage and backstage who make going to a show during the holidays an experience that one will never forget. It was such a pleasure getting a sense of what happens behind the scenes of a world-renowned institution like the Metropolitan Opera. As our conversation came to a close, I just had to ask them if they can sing us a little Christmas tune. Silent night, holy night, all is calm.
So we're actually heading downtown right now because today is the eve of the Feast of St. Nicholas. And all the way in Wall Street, there is the St. Nicholas Greek Orthodox Church. We're going to find out the actual origins of Santa. I'm very curious as to see uh, where does Santa come from. The devastating acts of September 11th, 2001 destroyed the original church of St. Nicholas. This Greek Orthodox congregation was founded in 1916. It was a terrible loss for an immigrant community that has stayed strong for a century. Luckily, in 2022, a new church rose from the ashes. Designed by architect Santiago Calatrava and donned in pentelic marble from Greece, the very same type of marble used in the Parthenon in Athens. This church is truly a sight to behold. But inside, there's a holy relic that may offer an insight to the origins of Santa Claus himself. Dimitrios is the one singing, and he was so kind enough to invite us on the eve of the feast day of St. Nicholas. Apparently it's an hour and a half mass, and there's a, going to be a full choir, and it's going to be an entire like event. This is a very special family moment for people of the Greek Orthodox faith. So I'm really excited to see how a Greek Orthodox Christmas celebration happens. So this is the altar, mm. as I said the last time, and today, we're gonna have, during Vespers, this is the Vespers, tomorrow is the Feast of St. Nicholas. Mm -hmm. It's the day that he passed from life, and we'll celebrate his memory. Here, we have his hand, it's bones, as we said in the past, from his right hand. As a blessing mm -hmm. for everybody, the priests, at a certain point during the service, they're gonna make a procession mm -hmm. in the church. They're gonna take this icon of St. Nicholas, the one priest and the other one will hold the hand up for everybody so they can receive the blessing. This also resembles the blessing that St. Nicholas now gives to the city. Yes, it will make covering whole New York and all the city. But St. Nicholas is Santa Claus. His life is connected with generosity and taking care of people that they are under need and under necessity. Such as widows, such as orphans, such as people that they had their daughters in need and they didn't have the dowry to, uh, to provide for them. So his almost giving habit, serving his own congregation in Myra, at the city that he was, mm. passed thereafter as a, um, a personality that whoever is in need, either in sea, either on the street, either in life, under certain temptations, would pray to St. Nicholas and St. Nicholas would provide. Thereafter, especially when his relics were transferred from Myra, where they were treasured, to Bari in Italy. Thereafter, through the Catholic Church and in general, the Western um, uh, literature passed to all the cultures of the Northern Europe at the time. Mm. Okay, and that's how in the years, the feast of St. Nicholas that was in the beginning of December became, oh, the good guy, the good person that brings us something, all the gifts. This is how thereafter passed through the culture that St. Nicholas, it's Santa Claus. For the Greek Orthodox Christmas, it is the epicenter of the festivities that they take place during the winter. The 25th of December, at the times that we transitioned from a Roman pagan empire to Christian empire, mm -hmm. it was the celebration of the God of Sun. But the Son of Righteousness that we believe Christ is replaced that feast with the birth of Christ because we know Christ was not born on the 25th of December, but later. But the fathers uh, of the church, uh, after the first ecumenical council, they uh, decided that that should be a common celebration for all the orthodoxy under the Eastern Roman Empire. Christmas. This is why you cannot take Christ out of Christmas. <laughs> you may replace it with the tree, you may replace it with everything, or with other festivities, or even just ignoring going to church or ignoring to understand that who is behind Christmas is actually Christ himself. But yet again, he is celebrated all around the world. And this period, starting from the 25th of December till the uh, uh, Epiphany is called Lodekaimeron, the 12 days of festivities that we have. If you want to have uh, have a happy uh, festivity Christmas Eve and sit around the table, you gotta be able to limit yourself and embrace everybody else. 
love the city during this time of year. I love being here. I love the decorations. I love, you know, people tend to be a lot nicer, <laughs> more giving, more accepting of others. And, you know, it's a time of year that I think that people practice more philanthropy and, and you, you tend to see that a little bit more. There's definitely a connection with uh, St. Nicholas and the tradition of Santa Claus, the Dutch, you know, that whole thing and New York, you know, how New York was founded. I, you know, I don't think you can really take Christmas away from the New York. And, and it's always kind of associated together. Although I'm not Greek Orthodox myself, I decided to stay for the hour and a half service to take in the Christmas spirit. In attendance was the Archbishop, some of the top clergy members, and a full choir led by Dimitrios himself. It was such a stunning service. One that really inspired the magic of Christmas within me. Just like Father Andreas said, you can't separate New York City from Christmas. I think the same thing applies to religion. It's impossible to separate Christmas from its religious roots. And more specifically, the spiritual meaning of Christmas. To be a beacon of light to others. Both friends and strangers alike. As the night continued, we headed over to the bustling Bryant Park Winter Village. It's one of the busiest places in the holidays with its shops, food stalls, and ice skating rink. We met with Megan, who's a New York City tour guide and content creator extraordinaire who has a penchant for ice skating. Like 15 years ago, so like I used to figure skate competitively. Part and of that was Ice Theater of New York yeah. did a performance at the Rockefeller Center tree lighting. Oh. So now, like where the ice skating rink is, it's, I guess, one iota ticket holders are there. Like, it's, it's audience, it's human audience. Right. And you used to be able to get really close to the tree if you were just like a normal pedestrian, and you could stare, o you could stare over the ice. So we entertained people during the commercial break. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so I'd like yeah. come out and like put my leg over my head. <laughs> I, it was never seen on television, but that was the first time that I saw the Rockefeller Center tree lighting was while I was skating. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's a great like first impression of New York. Yeah. I can only imagine. New York City is a place where so much of Christmas as we celebrate it today was born. Mm. And it's really exciting to be able to share these lesser known stories with tour guests who might not have known that electric Christmas lights were invented in New York City. So wait, Christmas lights were invented here in New York City? Yes, they were. So Edward H. Johnson, he worked for Edison. He, just for his family, created a string of Christmas lights. It wasn't a very long string of Christmas lights. Each of the bulbs was about the size of a walnut. And what I find the most fascinating about this is that each bulb, not the string, each bulb would have cost the equivalent of $33 in today's money. Oh, wow. So you can only like imagine how expensive it would have been to light something like the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Mm. I did the math. I think it was $1.6 million just for the light bulbs if you were to light the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree in 1882 using those lights. So it just really wasn't feasible at all for the average American to use electric lights. That wouldn't come until much later. And in fact, the New York Stock Exchange tree, the first exterior tree that kind of became the whole tradition, started in 1923. That coincided with the first national Christmas tree lighting, which was presided over by President Calvin Coolidge. And the purpose of it was to say, hey, we have electric Christmas lights. Uh, we don't have to use candles anymore. More. Candles are, are dangerous, but people didn't necessarily trust the electric Christmas lights yet. So it was all sort of this publicity stunt <laughs> to say electric Christmas lights are amazing. So between 1882 and 1923, there was kind of this, we had to figure out how to make lights affordable, more accessible for the average American. But that was started right here. That's amazing. Also, thanks to New York City, that's why we have all these lights over here 
Oh yes. wow! It, that, that, it lends an interesting historical perspective because New York City. I've been asking people all around the city, why is it so magical uh, Christmas time here in New York? And it's because, in a way, we invented modern Christmas. We did. At least the way that people think of it in the movies, with the lights and the spectacular dances and Santa and yeah. all these other aspects. The way that at least I imagine him looking was born through all of these traditions that eventually came to New York City through the Dutch. Oh, and then Christmas. Clement Clark Moore, he wrote a poem just for his kids yeah. called Twas the Night Before Christmas. It was the first time that Santa Claus was described as a jolly old elf, you know, with a belly that like jiggled like a bowl full of jelly. <laughs> and it was the first time that he rode around in a sleigh carried by a tiny reindeer. So the idea, before that, Washington Irving, I believe, described him as traveling around in a wagon. That was the first instance of Santa Claus or St. Nicholas flying. Oh, wow. And before that, I think he just kind of snuck around. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying our modern Santa was invented right here in New York, in yes. Chelsea, and where Washington Irving lived in, close to Gramercy Park. Correct. Yeah. yeah, the area that we know today as Chelsea used to be home to Clement Clark Moore, and that's where he wrote that poem for his kids. If I learn one thing on this journey, it's that our modern conception of Christmas has its roots in New York City. From the Christmas lights on trees, to our image of a jolly Santa Claus in his red and white garbs, to the many favorite holiday movies that take place within the city that never sleeps. Why is Christmas in New York City so magical? Let's venture one more time over to Rockefeller Center to take in all the lights during the night. The Rockettes actually don't get their name from Rockefeller. It comes from the original impresario who started this theater. He also started a theater called the Roxy Theater. His name was Rockefeller. So the original dancers were called the Roxyettes. But after Rockefeller Center took over, it became the Rockettes. And of course, everyone knows the Rockettes. They are some of the most famous dancers known to the holidays here in New York City. In the 1930s, according to legend, the fountain actually froze underneath Prometheus and the ice skating vendor actually jumped in and started skating around. Apparently, this caused a ruckus in Rockefeller Center and caught the attention of the center because the center was struggling to get people underneath the sunken plaza, which is a very unique architectural feature. But I assume maybe it was a bit intimidating for random passerbys. So they decided, wait a minute, this looks like a great idea. In 1936, they paved the sunken plaza with ice and has become a staple of Rockefeller Center ever since. And this is a typical scene during Christmas. Packed to the brim, shoulder to shoulder, you have no space to walk around. Rockefeller Center was built during the height of the Great Depression. Many people were in dire straits all around America. But Rockefeller and his team decided to build a massive center that would be the focal point for New Yorkers for generations to come. However, in 1931, the construction workers came together and actually put up a 20-foot tree. And if you see a photo, you see a lot of the men are actually waiting in line. They were waiting to get their paychecks. So they got their paychecks and celebrated Christmas. Nowadays, the trees go up to 80 to 100 feet tall including this spruce over here that comes from a nice family in upstate New York. Going around the city, what I've realized is the people that make the holiday spirit really come alive. You know, you have people here from all around the world mixing and mingling, 
different faiths coming over, lending their own traditions over here for the holidays. Because we all go through winter together. We all experience the darkness of these times and we want to bring a light towards it. This is why I love New York City during Christmas time. I'm so glad we got to meet so many wonderful people who make this holiday cheer happen. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and all the best to you and your families. Feliz Navidad! Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays from the Met Opera Chorus. And I hope that everybody has the most amazing holiday season ever. I want to wish everyone happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Wow, welcome to New York. I'm curious, what does Christmas mean to you? Merry Christmas and happy holidays, my friends.